The game takes place between two teams. One team starts by saying a composite number, the other team with a prime number. We're going to see how to play this game, and we're going to watch some kids play it. The red team starts by choosing a composite number. For starters, we're going to make it 12 or under. Let's say 8. The blue team responds by choosing any prime number. Let's say 2. The red team then chooses a prime number. Let's say 7. And the blue team chooses a composite number. Now the blue team is going to win this game if they can make the two sides of this equation equal. So what composite number should they choose? They should choose 28. So blue has won. If blue cannot make those two sides equal, then red wins. The game is best explained by playing it in front of the whole class. I like girls versus boys. I set up some seats for the people who choose the composite numbers first, the red players, and some other seats for the people who play the blue first. When most of your students understand how to play the game, let them take out some paper and get at it. One small team against another small team. Remember to keep that initial number, the initial composite number, 12 or less for the first few games. And then you can get rid of that condition or you could make it 50 or less. Did you notice that the girl in the blue started to impose a time limit on the boys? That's very interesting and please let your students experiment with rules, especially around timing. After your students have played for some time, they should start to get a preference for either the red team or the blue team. Why not bring that out into a classroom discussion? Which is best, the red team or the blue team? You want your students to be able to express why they think a certain team is better. Then go back into the gaming experience. Let them play against each other some more. Let's now look at a typical problem group, kids that aren't fully engaged. One way to get them engaged is to challenge them. And that's what I did with a group uh, that was uh, just not quite there. And so for them, they, they were trying to really <laughs> give me numbers that I was going to struggle with. And um, instead of multiplying out uh, like 44 times 47, uh, instead, of course, I found a prime divisor of 44, and then all I had to multiply 47 by was 4 in order to beat them as the blue team. So now you're going to watch that. I pick 11. Okay, I pick 188. <laughs> I'm not saying that these guys were totally turned around and for the rest of the class sat quietly in their seats and worked on the game, but they at least had a mathematical experience. After playing for some time, your class might end up with the conclusion that the blue team is more likely to win than the red team. And their reasoning might be something like this. They might say, well, no matter what composite number the red team chooses, let's say 13 times 31, blue can always choose a prime factor of it. For example, 13. Red now chooses a prime number. And in order to win, blue has to construct a composite number based on all of the numbers that they haven't yet used from the red side. So in this case, they haven't used the 31 and they haven't used the 2. So they're going to use those and that will be their composite number. 
and that will in fact solve the problem and it looks like blue is going to win this one and it's going to win everyone but not so fast first of all this is broken down it's made easy for the blue team but it's not quite as easy as that if you have the red team say 403 instead of 13 times 31 um, to find that 13 is awkward we can look at this algebraically uh, this might just be a little secret between us you might not do this in front of your kids but you can look at um, the same thing and you can you can break it down so P is any prime times a any number over 1 and Q is another prime and you can see that it looks like this is always going to be solvable but the problem is is whenever you add time into the into the equation and that provides a practical problem for the blue side because it can take them a long time to find P typically you're going to get asked can I use a calculator and after them playing the game for a while without a calculator there's no problem but you let both teams use a calculator the red team as well as the blue team and the blue team will very quickly find that this solves none of their problems <laughs> this just makes matters worse uh, let's look at a ridiculous example this is a composite number uh, that <laughs> like can you find the prime factors there's two of them but uh, needless to say rather difficult to solve the unsolved problem of mathematics is to find a reliable way for the blue team to win this is equivalent to breaking the RSA cipher which is the basis for internet security if your kids manage to do this a million dollars is peanuts <laughs> they'll have access to government secrets, they'll have access to bank account information, they can become master criminals overnight. Whenever, whenever I go into grade 6 classrooms and present this problem, I lie. I always lie and I always tell them that they'll get a million dollars if they solve this problem. But there's no reason why this should not be a reality. This is an extremely tough problem. It might not have a solution. So why not get a million dollars backing to inspire kids? That's what Math Pickle is doing. In collaboration with the Pacific Institute for the Mathematical Sciences, we are seeking out funding for 13 unsolved problems, one for each grade kindergarten through grade 12. The prize money to be split between the mathematician who solves the problem and their most inspirational K through 12 teacher.